you have to interrupt the old pattern of doing, 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 and create a new pattern of being, being, being. Gabrielle Bernstein, a role model for spiritual seekers. Welcome back to Dear Gabby. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. This show has definitely taken on a life of its own. We have such a beautiful community that we've created here. And I'm seeing, and I'm seeing so many heart opening experiences occur as we go deeper into our own growth and development and our bravery to talk about the big stuff and to open up our consciousness to spiritual and creative solutions for our well being and our health and our spirituality and our growth. That's what this show is all about, my friends. I got my deck. I got my my spirit junkie. No, I'm actually going to pull a card from the super attractor deck right now. It is so pretty. I hope you can hear me shuffling, 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 getting the best card up. Yes. Okay, here we go. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. I am going to open to what card do we have today? Beautiful. When I truly surrender my desires to the universe, a mighty force of faith can set in. When I truly surrender my desires to the universe, a mighty force of faith can set in. I'm going to pick a second card too, because I think we've done a whole show on surrender. And I think that's going to come up because it always does. And I'm picking a second card as well, just because why not? <laughs> I love this one. I can do less and attract more. Boom, people. I can do less and attract more. That is actually one of my favorite passages from super attractor do less and attract more it's a such a heart opening way of living because often we live in this way where we think the harder i push the more i do the more pain i have the more i suffer the more i will succeed the more i will accomplish it's so the opposite when we push when we control when we try to force things into form we really get in the way in my book, Super Attractor, I talk about being a manic manifester, someone who's constantly trying to do all the spiritual things to try to make things happen. But manifesting is quite the opposite. Manifesting is doing less and attracting more, being more receptive to the energy that is around us, being more open to that heart-centered place within us and not forcing or pushing or trying to control because all that control and all that pushing and all that doing gets in the way of all of our capacity to receive. So I bet this will be a topic that will come up over and over again on this episode, do less and attract more. It always shows us what we need. The cards reveal the theme for the show. Let's see what comes through. Say that affirmation just for a moment to yourself before we bring in our guests. I can do less and attract more. Just say that to yourself. I can do less and attract more. And just feel into that. Doesn't that feel good to just say that to yourself? I can do less and attract more. Wow. What a nice, different perspective on life. I've trained myself to live in that way. I've lived that way, the opposite of that for uh, over two decades, I'm sure maybe oh, over three decades, I was pushing and controlling. Now at 41, I'm finally allowing myself to step back, to give things away, to ask for help, to do less and attract more. I can testify that the less you push and control, the less you try to do, 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 the more you will receive. Let's bring in our first guest now to our Dear Gabby show. Let's go. Let's go. Let's see who we got. Oh, we got a driver. We got a driver. Pull over. Pull over. I'm parked. I promise. I'm parked. He's parked. I, you listen, I love Dear Gabby and all of you. It's my favorite thing in the world, but I, know, I don't want to cause a car accident. <laughs> I'm parked. We're safe. We're good. I promise. What's your name, sweetheart? My name is Christina. I go by Tina. 
Tina, what's going down, girl? Okay, just let me catch my breath for one second. Um, because I've had, again, like most say that I, I knew I was gonna get picked because as I was driving, I was stopped at a red light and a little bird stopped on my car. Just stopped the window and just kept pecking at the window. I rolled down the window and he wouldn't move. <laughs> and I'm like, man, I'm really struggling with um i got sent home from work yesterday because i do 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 uh, i'm a doer there we go you burning out when you the floor, oh i am burnt out i i don't sleep i don't eat sorry don't no take like just just be present right now with me with what's up put your hand on your heart baby and put your left hand on your belly and just hold yourself for a moment. And let's just talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. You're not sleeping. You're not eating. You're burning out. You got sent home from work. Yeah. Because, okay. because of my attitude, which I, I get, I understand it. But man, it is tough to just... I, I'm just, I can't find my, I'm a manic manifester. I do, I do everything. I've been, um, I've been sober for just about three years now. Great. Good. Okay. And all I want is to help people. Yet I find myself in meaningless jobs and meaningless work. And I just say, well, if I just keep doing then the right thing will come along and, okay. and it just doesn't. And I, okay. Okay. Let me slow you down, Tina. Okay. okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rumble in here. Gabby, All right. you're three years clean and sober. That is baby sobriety. No offense. <laughs> it's like early baby days, right? You're like three years old rebirthing yourself right now. So when you're in early recovery like that, the goal of big life achievements, let me get that role in my position that I need to be in, it isn't my suggestion to make these outside goals the highest priority at this time, at this time. Doesn't mean that they aren't held, that they aren't out there, that they aren't beautiful expectations that you can create for your life, but it is alarming to me when people in early recovery start to think they need to create, 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 do, 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 because you're literally in this early infantile stage of rebuilding, rebirthing yourself. So I want to offer you today, Tina, a permission, number one, permission to focus on your well-being over your career, number one. Number two, I want to offer you the affirmation, a new affirmation that my well-being is my highest priority and everything else will follow. This is the epitome of doing less and attracting more. Because sweetheart, if you burn out, if you aren't sleeping, if you aren't eating, if you're being you know, negative at work and getting sent home, it's only creating more resistance to the presence of that serenity and that receptivity and that possible manifestation and the future manifestation of all that you do want to create in your life. So when I say speed up by slowing down, I, it is so meant for you today, my love. If you literally slow the F down, make your highest priority, your well-being, your breath, your connection to your spirit, your connection to your body, your recovery, you're hopefully in some kind of recovery group of some kind, getting the help that you need, therapy, all of the things that you need to rebirth and rebuild your life then I can guarantee you the time that you slow down and settle into your own personal well-being 
will come back to you tenfold and likely get you to the place that you pray to be at far faster. So this card was meant for you. That bird was telling you it's your time today. You are my love in a beautiful position to give yourself full bodied permission to stop trying to achieve and start letting yourself receive. This is where you're at right now. And when we embrace these new perspectives, that's the miracle moment. So looking at me right now, Tina, are you willing to accept that you are in early recovery? I am. I am willing to accept that I am in early recovery. Are you willing to accept that you shouldn't be overly trying to achieve right now? That one I have a hard time accepting because I am a perfectionist. I am, uh, I feel a functioning anxiety human. I don't know any different. Right. I feel my worth stems from my overdoing and overachieving. I can't even believe how magnificent the universe is to guide us together like this today, because this, this card was literally, I was like, I need to pick a different card. I knew it because there was a message that had to come through. So the biggest message for you in this moment is that undoing the anxiety habit and the belief that if I'm not doing, I'm not good enough is a slow practice. It takes time, but it won't be undone if you stay in the repetition of that addictive pattern, just like you can't get clean and sober unless you put down the drink or the drug. So I actually would recommend that you almost count days on doing less. Count days on doing less. Right? The same way you would count your three years to get to your sobriety count days on doing less. And so what could doing less look like? It could mean that you don't stay longer at work or that you don't uh, people please one time that day. And even if, when I say counting, that you're not gonna be perfect every day. So maybe it means every single day you make a commitment to do one thing differently. And I see you're holding your heart, you're relaxing, you're coming to a place of ease. That's beautiful. I see you really taking that in. Make that commitment. One small thing every day to stop doing and start receiving because, and count the days on it. I want you to get to 90 and obviously carry on beyond that. But you have to interrupt the old pattern of doing, 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 and create a new pattern of being, being, being. Okay. Got me? I got you. Thank you, Gabby. You're welcome, my love. Thank you for being on Dear Gabby. I know this was a divine intervention. There's no accident whatsoever. Ah, beautiful, beautiful work. I also, yeah, I also believe that so much. I'm I'm from Canada, so hi. You know, I love you Canadians. I love you people so much. I love you. I love you. Thank you so much. Take that in, go home, lie down on your back, Go to, go to any of my free guided meditations online. There's so many, we'll put them in the show notes today, but just Google Gabby Bernstein free meditations and just be still. That's day one. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. Go girl. Go girl. Love you. Love you too, sweetheart. So what's your name, love? Courtney. Courtney. How can I help you today on your road trip, Courtney? So my question is about um, disordered eating habits coming back up and how to work through those. Beautiful. I have a lot to say on this topic. Any form of disordered eating or addiction in any form is a part of ourselves that is trying to protect a younger, fearful part that might be coming up. 
So I want to ask you, I don't want to go too, too deep because this isn't a therapy session, but I want to just ask you when the disordered eating started to show back up in your life, Courtney, was there something going on that was causing you to be scared or was there something up in your life that was, that was tumultuous for you? So when we have a, a part of us that is uh, overeating, over drinking, overworking, like we heard before, all the doing, even, even when it's uh, disordered eating, whether it's not eating or overeating, all of that doing is causing us to be in a place where we feel a sense of needing to protect ourselves from feeling something that's behind that behavior. So here on Dear Gabby, we can't go as far as to start to address or heal what's behind it, but it's my job and my opportunity for you right now, Courtney, to help you see that the behavior of, of all that you might be doing with the disordered eating is a form of protection. It's a form of keeping you safe from having to feel some big feelings that are scary to show up for. In some ways, we can have the opportunity to thank that part of ourselves. We've done this on the show before when we've talked about trauma, when we've talked about uh, a lot of the, the addictive patterns that come up in different episodes. What we can do is we can look at that pattern of disordered eating and for a moment, just humbly say thank you for whatever you've been doing to protect me from feeling some big stuff that I haven't been ready to feel. That's a first shift there. The next step is to really begin to address the core wounds that live beneath the pattern because you can't white knuckle change. You can't white knuckle your way through healing and addiction. Addiction and addictive patterns can only be healed at the root, the root cause condition. What is it that you're running from? What is it that you're avoiding? What is it that you're afraid to feel? What is it that you haven't addressed yet? What unresolved parts of you are being pushed down through the addiction of choice? And so I'm just going to invite you to ask yourself that question today, because once again, this is another form of doing, doing, doing over a feeling. So if in any form of addiction, we are, we are trying to do something else to avoid what is beneath it. So we want to really open our consciousness up to, okay, am I ready to face what's there? Am I ready to get therapy? Am I ready to do deeper work? Am I ready to read, read more deeply about, about uh, disordered eating and, and trauma or disordered eating and what, what's behind it? Am I willing to start to nurture myself in that way? But the first thing I would like you to do today, Courtney, with my guidance is just to really hold yourself. I want you to put your arms around yourself. And anyone who's feeling struggling like, like this in any form right now, do this. Just wrap your arms around yourself and just say thank you to the part of you that's been acting out. Just say thank you so much. Thank you so much. You've been doing a good job trying to keep me from feeling these feelings that I'm so scared to feel. And I really am grateful that you've been there to help me but I'm going to do my part to help you not have to work so hard and not be in such an extreme role. And that's, that's really taking ownership of your ability to get help, your ability to, to come on Dear Gabby today, the beautiful boyfriend that you have sitting next to you in the car, all of the gifts that are right in front of you, Courtney, I want you to really take them in and I want you to be, be really, really conscious and aware of your own ability to self-soothe, your own ability to care for the parts of you that you've been running from. Now, the, that's what we can do right here, right now, is just honor all of the parts of you, especially right now, the part of you that's had this disor disordered eating and say, thank you for your service, but I'm gonna take it from here. So we'll start there, Courtney. Once again, a lot of doing over feelings, which is the big topic for today. Thank you, gorgeous. Thank you for joining me here today on Dear Gabby. When you do less, you will attract more. And I'm so proud to be able to share this conversation with you.
If you like this video and you want to get more Gabby, check out the next one right over here.